Hi, Wizard of Legacy Lane here. Want to enjoy much longer battery life? Reduce the weight of your Challenger X electric scooter by 30 pounds for easier loading into your SUV, as well as increase its range from barely 15 miles to over 20? The way to do that is by swapping out your Challenger X scooter's standard lead-acid batteries with a lithium battery. Fortunately for you, you get to benefit from the very expensive, bone-headed mistake I made when I first tried to install a lithium battery into my Challenger X. Believe me, it cost me a bundle to learn that you just can't pull out the lead-acid batteries and then connect the lithium battery to the same red and black cables that connected the four 12-volt in-series lead-acid batteries to the scooter's electrical system. <laughs> yeah, I had to learn that lithium battery ruining lesson the hard way so you don't have to. Now, here's how to do it the right way. First remove the standard equipped sealed lead acid batteries. With the batteries removed, you can see the loose ends of two red cables and two black cables. One black and one red cable extends from the yellow electrical bus box, and one black and one red cable extend from the motor overload reset button. Remove the cover from the yellow bus box. Pick off the hot melt covering the nut on the red cable connection terminal. Remove the long red cable lead from the bus box. Now let's take a moment to understand what we see after removing the long red cable lead from the bus box. Here you can see the long red cable connector removed from the bus box. We also see the charging port fuse holder with two smaller gauge red wires attached to it. One of those smaller red wires is coming from the charging port and the other is coming from a splice to the long red cable just removed from the bus box. We can also see a short red cable that was connected to the nearest lead acid battery of which the other end is connected to the motor overload reset button. Remove the charging port fuse holder by disconnecting the two small gauge red wires. After doing this, we can now plainly see the remaining small gauge red wire to the charging port and the red cable lead to the motor overload reset button. Take the short red cable from the motor overload reset button and attach the free end to the terminal in the electrical bus box from which you just removed the long red cable. Cover the nut on the terminal connection with hot melt to keep it from coming loose. Here you can see the result of connecting the short red cable from the motor overload button to the bus box. Now remove the black cable connected to the other male connection point on the motor overload reset button. Cut the ends off the long red cable previously removed from the terminal in the bus box and strip the ends off the cable in order to install a male 10 through 12 gauge insulated connector on one end and a female connector on the other end. Here is the crimp on of the male connector, followed by the crimp on of the female connector. Now take that cable and connect the female end to the open male connection of the motor overload reset button. Next, prepare a 10 gauge inline fuse holder to be connected to the red cable you just connected to the motor overload reset button by crimping on a female 10 through 12 gauge insulated connector on one end.
Now connect the female end of the fuse holder to the male end of the cable you just connected to the motor overload reset button. Replace the cover on the bus box. Here's the red wire to the charging port that was connected to the fuse holder removed earlier. Cut the small gauge black wire leading to the charging port at the point where it's spliced into the main black battery connection cable leading from the bus box. To prevent any possibility of an electrical short, I covered the exposed stub where the black charging port wire was spliced into the main black battery cable with some heat shrink insulation. Now would be a good time to look at the 48 volt 21 amp hour lithium battery that will be installed. This particular battery was purchased from dhgate.com, a website connecting China manufacturers to worldwide buyers. I purchased this battery at a savings of hundreds of dollars less than what I would have paid for a comparable battery from a stateside supplier. The downside for purchasing a battery from DHgate.com is that a U.S. purchaser will have to wait about 15 to 17 days for the battery to arrive, and the battery will come with a cheap, poor quality charger. The lithium battery has two leads. One for connecting your scooter's electrical system, and the other is connected to the battery BMS or Battery Management System and is used for charging the battery. Each of these leads contains a red and black wire, though you can't see these individual red and black wires in this battery's charging lead as they are jointly covered in a common exterior insulation. This battery ordered from dhgate.com came with a male connection lead that will be spliced into the scooter's electrical system. Depending on from whom you order your battery, you may not get one of these male connections splice in leads. The steps taken so far in this video were done in anticipation of using this male splice in lead. Later in this video, I'll show you what the connections look like for a battery that doesn't come with this male splice in lead. Install a 12 through 10 gauge crimp on butt connector on the end of the red fuse holder cable that you connected to the cable leading to the motor overload reset button. Also install a 12 through 10 gauge crimp on butt connector to the end of the long black cable leading to the bus box. Strip the insulation off the ends of the red and black wires extending from the male battery splice-in lead and crimp connect the red lead to the red fuse holder lead extending from the motor overload reset button. Then crimp connect the black wire to the black battery connection lead extending from the bus box. Here you can see the finished crimped connections. Install a 22 through 18 gauge crimp on butt connector to both the red and black leads extending from the battery charging port. Cut off about 6 to 12 inches of the output lead of the cheap charger that came with the lithium battery. Expose about an inch and a half of the red and black wires contained within the common black insulation and strip off about a quarter inch of the end of each wire for their insertion into the butt connectors previously installed on the red and black charging port wires. Crimp connect these wires to their matching color wires extending from the charging port, as seen here. Install a 30 amp blade fuse into the fuse holder.
Now, place the lithium battery into the battery compartment and connect the female output lead to the spliced-in male input lead you previously attached to the scooter's electrical system. Now connect the battery charging input lead to the scooter's charging port. OK, now it's time to look at an installation with a slightly less expensive lithium battery, one purchased from AliExpress.com which didn't come with a male splice-in lead for connecting the battery's output female connector to the scooter's electrical system. To prepare this battery for installation, cut off the existing female output connector, being very careful to only cut one wire at a time or you'll short out the battery and possibly damage it. Now install a 12 through 10 gauge insulated female crimp-on connector to each of the output leads from the battery and a male insulated crimp-on connector to the black cable extending from the bus box and a male connector to the red fuse holding cable coming from the motor overload reset button as shown here. With the battery installed, Cut to size the foam packing material that came with the battery to displace the free space within the battery compartment. This is done in order to prevent the battery's possible damage by jolts from bumps in the road. Upon completing the battery's installation, the next step is to charge your new battery. As I explained earlier, if you order your battery from dhgate.com or aliexpress.com, the chances are that it will come with a very cheap and unreliable charger. That's why, while I waited for my battery to be delivered, I immediately ordered this better quality PG Tech charger. If whatever better quality charger you order doesn't come with an XLR male connector, you'll need to install one with the red and black wire connection configuration shown here. When your battery is fully charged, and this could take anywhere from 4 to 8 hours, the light will turn from red to green, and the fan in the charger will shut off. Now you're ready to ride!